Hello everyone, welcome back to Third Sense. I'm Clem Harold. Now I know what you're probably thinking is it's that time of year when we're all getting a lot of videos coming up on our YouTube feeds, perhaps various blog posts, things like that on social media, telling us about New Year's resolutions and, and how to make a good one. And I think we've all been here before in a way. We've all had that sense of January 1st, I make a really big grandiose commitment. And then sometime in early February, it all falls apart. And what I would say from the outset is that from a, a Christian perspective, it's good for us to recognize that because it speaks, I think, to the reality of the, the Christian life. This experience that we've had of making commitments, making resolutions, whether it's in our daily life, saying I'm going to get up earlier or I'm going to start taking cold showers, whatever it might be. We've all had that experience of making these commitments and then not following through. And just again, from the outset, I think that does speak to the fact that in the Christian life and in life in general, Growing in discipline, growing in virtue isn't easy. These things are hard. It takes a lot of perseverance, a lot of grace, a lot of self-knowledge to do these things. I want us to recognize that and realize that there isn't necessarily a quick fix. There's not necessarily a sort of panacea that's going to solve these things for us. What I want to do instead in this video is I want to share with you uh, really just a concept that I found helpful in my own life. And this is something that my friend, Dr. Matthew Bruninger at Franciscan University, he shared with me one time. And the concept I'm talking about is the idea of a keystone habit. And what is a keystone habit? Well, it's this sort of psychological concept of a particular habit, which when you get it right, it has this kind of ripple effect on different aspects of your life. And sometimes those that, that ripple effect might not be intended. It might be unintended. And this can take one of two forms. You can have negative keystone habits or you can have positive keystone habits. So an example of a negative keystone habit might be that I'm in the habit of going to bed really late every night. Maybe I, I often end up you know, drinking in the evenings. I don't get to bed till 2 a.m. What's the direct result of that? Well, the result of that obviously is that I, I end up getting up later the next morning and I have less energy. But there could also be this ripple effect where it not only is giving me less energy, but it's also having this adverse effect on different aspects of my life. Maybe I'm less confident during the day. Maybe I'm less fulfilled when I'm working that afternoon. Maybe I'm not praying as much as I should because... I didn't get up in time before going to work. So you can see how this, this negative habit of going to bed too late is having this, this adverse ripple effect. But then on the flip side, we have positive keystone habits. What would be some examples of this? Well, for example, deciding to make your bed every morning. Another example might be deciding to work out every morning. So the very basic result of working out in the morning is I'm fitter, I'm growing physically. But what's the ripple effect? What's the keystone nature of this habit? Well, it's that I'm actually getting up when I should. I'm getting the energy I need throughout the day. I feel more confident. I feel more fulfilled. And I have a more ordered life as a result. So these are, these are a couple of examples. Uh, firstly, of a negative keystone habit and then of a couple of positive keystone habits. And what I want to say to you here is, is, is firstly to challenge you to, to think more on this concept. Where in my life do I possess negative keystone habits? Habits which are, in a sense, dragging down the rest of my life and really impeding my self-growth. But then secondly, more positively, what are those keystone habits that the Lord might be asking me to implement this year? And I'm not talking here about six or seven habits. I'm talking about one or maybe two. What are one or two things that if I could get them right, something that's achievable, something that's concrete, if I was to get that right, then it would have this ripple effect on the rest of my life. But I also want to give you a suggestion, not just a challenge, but also a suggestion. And what I would suggest to you is that from a biblical point of view, there is one keystone habit which stands above all the rest. And that is, maybe no surprises here, it's the keystone habit of daily prayer. You know, in the scriptures in, in the book of Proverbs, in chapter 16, verse, verse 3, we're told that if we commit our plans to the Lord, then he will bring them to completion. I think it's a really beautiful idea. And we're told throughout the scriptures of this idea of Jesus Christ being the cornerstone. And I think it's important for us as 21st century Christians to recognize that the idea of Jesus as the cornerstone isn't just a sort of theological idea. It's not just saying Jesus is the interpretive key for the scriptures and for the law and the prophets, even though that's, that's certainly true. I think there's also an ethical and psychological dimension to this idea, that Jesus isn't just the cornerstone of the scriptures, He's also the cornerstone of our lives, of our hearts. And so when we're talking about the idea of a keystone habit, we would do well to reflect on he who is the cornerstone of our lives. And in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus has this line where he tells us 
in chapter six, he says, seek first the kingdom of God and then all these things will be yours as well. And the things he's talking about there are things like provision for our material needs, shelter and clothing and food and so forth. And it's really important to recognize Jesus doesn't say that these things are unimportant. He simply says it's a matter of priorities, saying seek first the kingdom of God and then these things will be yours. Seek first the kingdom of God and then you will find the discipline you need to live a fulfilled life. Seek first the kingdom of God and then you're going to get the courage and the inspiration to deal with that difficult situation at work. Seek first the kingdom of God and you're going to be given the grace to grow deeper in your relationship with your family members. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be yours. And when we do that, when we really take that seriously, what that entails is a life of daily prayer. There is no other way. There's no shortcuts in the Christian life. It always necessitates a daily prayer life. That is the keystone habit which all habits flow from. And if we don't get that right, nothing else is going to work in the Christian life. So from a biblical perspective, it's so, so important to commit ourselves to saying, I am going to pray every day without exception. I'm going to have that consistency that faithfulness to the Lord. And maybe to begin with, it's just 15 or 20 minutes. And that's totally okay. But the consistency, the faithfulness is the important thing. And I really believe that if you can get that right, if you can have that commitment, that keystone habit, then all these other habits, whether it's about exercising, your health, whether it's about growing intellectually, whatever it might be, all of them will flow from that. All right, final thought. Like I've said, if we can get this one thing right, then I really do believe it will change your life. And what do I mean by that exactly? Well, something else that my friend, uh, Dr. Dr. B shared with me is when we're thinking from a Christian perspective about changing your life, it's helpful, maybe not so much to think of it as an overnight sort of radical transformation. But what he shared me once, which I found really helpful, is if you think of your life stretching out before you, the next 40, 50, 60 years of life, when you talk about changing it, if you can just look at it in the sense of moving your life just a few degrees right here and now. And if you can do that, then by the end of your life, what you're going to find is that you're at a very different point from where you would have been if you hadn't implemented those changes, if you hadn't got those keystone habits down, if you hadn't implemented that daily prayer life. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Clem Harrod with Third Sense. And remember, life is short, so be a saint.